Hey, what's going on everybody? Dr. Michael Lewis, CEO and founder of Willow Healing Center uh, and Willow Medical Center, where I offer affordable concierge medicine for everybody here in Woodland Hills or the surrounding areas. I wanted to talk about something uh, that's kind of been on my mind recently and actually for a long time, and it has to do with, um, you know, these fad scientific-based uh, therapies for people. And you, uh, what we're seeing is there's a lot of people and a lot of companies taking advantage of good people like you and scaring them, taking advantage of their anxiety, preying on their anxiety, um, and making false medical claims uh, saying that they're going to cure you. And one of the big things that I'm seeing is uh, alkaline water. And I wanted to sort of debunk that myth a little bit. Now, alkaline water says, keep your body alkaline or more basic, less acidic. You'll have less inflammation and it will cure and heal most ailments that you have. And there's some factual, you know, data here, which is, Acidity causes inflammation, and if you go back to the very beginning of disease, the Adam and Eve, if you will, or the Big Bang, or whatever you believe, of disease, the very beginning, you'll find an inflammatory process, and it's this inflammatory process that um, starts a whole uh, pathway, sequelae, whatever you're, you want to choose for the word, uh, 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 of disease, such as atherosclerosis and heart disease, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, and other arthritis uh, problems, there's always an inflammatory cascade that starts at the very beginning. So, of course, the, the, the water people are right. The more uh, acidic, the more inflammation you have. So, the more alkaline or basic, it's assumed that the less, acid, the less acidity you have. Now, let's look at the science. Uh, let's, let's start with what they say. We should be drinking water greater than a pH of 7.5. So our pH scale, let's talk about pH really quickly. pH is the measurement of acidity, which measures from 0 to 14. H is a measurement of the ions, the positive ions, the positive hydrogen ions. And the P is a mathematical uh, representation of what's called the negative log. It makes things a little bit easier to, to measure. So if pH goes from 0 to 14, somewhere we have a middle, which is, we'll just call it N for neutral pH. And the higher we go, we're going to call this basic, basic, or alkaline. And this is acid, the lower you go. A couple things to, uh, a couple things to know. Somewhere between two to three is what's our gastric or our stomach content pH. Somewhere between one to two and a half or so are things like dark soda, like Coke, Diet Coke, and most dark soda with phosphoric acid, okay? Um, so that's on this side of things. So. It's imp the, the, the studies that have been done with alkaline water have been minimal and haven't really shown a lot. There's one study, I believe it's in the American Journal of, uh, of Gastroenterology uh, years back, talked about, um, looked at pepsin, which is a, an enzyme have, uh, in the stomach that has to do with acidity and, and, and releasing acid in the stomach, that keeping your uh, uh, intake more alkaline on this side of the scale, we'll just say greater than eight, um, actually decrease the pepsin activity, I believe, and, and decrease the amount of gastritis, GERD, esophageal reflux, or acid stomach. So there were some benefits there, but it seems to be more topical. And that's really what we're talking about. The effects, you ready? The effects of alkaline water are most likely topical. They are not systemic, and let me show you why. kind of show you why here. So all we need to know is one chemical equation called the carbonic anhydrase equation. Carbonic 
anhydrous. I always wondered how professors can write so well up on a board. Carbonic anhydrase equation, because I can't. So, so a carbonic anhydrase equation looks like this. We're gonna scare you and go back to chemistry really quick. Carbon dioxide plus water has a reversing reaction that makes carbonic acid, H2CO3 minus, right? And then this other reaction, which breaks down H2CO3 into bicarbonate, like sodium bicarbonate, very basic, very neutral, and hydrogen ions, okay? So this reaction takes place in our body 100% of the time, all the time. It doesn't even need a specific that the enzyme that's used, carbonic anhydrase, never runs out. So there's no rate limiting step. It just keeps going back and forth all day long. And this whole equation right here maintains our body's pH between 7.35 and 7.45 all the time, okay? If the pH becomes out of this range, people die, okay? People get very sick. The enzymatic reactions in our body that are driving all these chemical reactions back and forth, they don't work anymore. So our body doesn't sit up at 7.6 or down here at 6.8 being more acidic and therefore we need more alkaline water or we need to keep our body's pH over 7.45 closer to 8 because we would die. It doesn't make any sense. In other words, no matter what you're putting into your body, this reaction is going to maintain neutrality at this pH. It doesn't even matter. You can drink hydrochloric acid while that's in your stomach, right? You can sit and drink excess hydrochloric acid. I don't recommend that, by the way. And it would wreck your stomach. Something awful. Wreck your esophagus and your mouth. It would burn and you would get ulcers and all this kind of stuff. But guess what? The pH of your body would eventually find its way back to 7.35 7 to 7.45. How does that work? Well, when you are exercising, for example, and you're building up lactic acid, you've heard of that, your muscles get sore, you go through what's called an anaerobic uh, respiration, this bunch of chemicals reaction that produces lactic acid, remember H+. When you have too much of this, guess what? It pushes the reaction this way to create water and we start hyperventilating to blow off excess carbon dioxide. This is exactly the reason why you breathe heavy when you exercise. You're building H plus and you're pushing the reaction this way, okay? If you happen to hold your breath and build up too much carbon dioxide and it will go this way, it will push the reaction this way and your kidneys and your colon uh, will help regulate the amount of bicarbonate to maintain a neutral pH. So, so long story short, this, these waters that we drink, oh, look at this, hey, this was one of them. I won't show you what this says because that's not fair, but it came in like this, filled on site at, at a clinic, and they gave it to me. And they actually told me it was a pH of, I think, 8.5. Well, guess what, one, I ran it in my pH meter in my lab and it was totally neutral at 7.01, okay? Maybe it was a bad batch, I'll give them that much, or maybe it was old, fine. But by this equation, no matter what you're drinking, your body is gonna maintain this pH. Your body's not gonna be here, your body's not gonna be here in the 7.1, 6.5 range, if you are, People are dying. People have diabetic ketoacidosis. They're over here and they're in the hospital and they are very, very ill. Or these people have been having uh, uh, traveled and have diarrhea for the last, you know, you know, 20 days and having to, you haven't moving their bowels six times a day and they're losing all this base out of their bowels and now they're losing base, they make more acid, they're hyperventilating, and their pH drops to levels that are going to kill them unless, they're, unless it's corrected. So, acidity does cause inflammation, we know that. And so, of course, we should try and eat a little bit 
uh, better foods and more greens, which are more alkaline, uh, which are just better for us in general. But our pH is regulated no matter what we're putting in our mouth. All right, I hope that helps. Uh, be wary of these uh, alkaline water uh, businesses that are trying to get you to spend hundreds if not thousands of dollars a month to buy a machine to keep water alkaline and uh, what else are they calling it? Super, super molecules or super clusters of water. You know, there's a whole bunch of words out there that are talking about how water can be placed together in a more efficient chemical bond and therefore it gets into your body better. This is a bunch of hocus pocus and it, and it is not true. So I want you to be aware of this and uh, if you have any questions, get a hold of me, Dr. Michael Lewis. You can get a hold of me at uh, Dr. Mike at WillowHealingCenter.com. Search me on the web at uh, www.WillowMedicalCenter.com or leave a comment. See you later. Thanks for hanging out. Bye-bye.